know that uh, Kenyan agriculture is largely rain fed, but more than 80% is arid and semi arid with very little rainfall. Droughts have become very frequent, especially in recent times due to climate change, and so there is unpredictability and reduced food production. Maize is uh, a very important food crop which is relied upon by about 96% of Kenyans. It contributes significantly to food and income security. It also accounts for 9 to 18% of total household expenditures. 75% of total maize production is by small scale farmers. There has, however, been a decline over the years in maize produ production and also productivity. <coughs> the government has taken note of this and has put in place various programs to enhance not only production of maize but all other crops and I believe livestock. So there is need for urgent and radical action to reduce pressure on maize consumption trends and food dietary practices by encouraging blending of maize flour with largely underutilized under rich flours like uh, millets, the sorghum, the cassava, and others. So blending is, of flours is one of the interventions to increase food security under the Big Four agenda. So the benefits of blending, I think we all know, there is a reduction in maize consumed there is going to be improved in nutrition. <laughs> there will be food and income security, especially in the arid and semi-arid lands where some of most of these crops, alternative uh, cereals are produced. As much as the population increase is good for sustained labor provision, it is also necessary that population has to be sustained through a healthy food or through good health provisions. Even as we cry about a drought, climate change, and what have you, we must also, uh, the climate of our minds must also change. And I challenge each one of you here, we must all promote maize plenty. One of the dangers in cereal-based diets is that yeah, you get the energy, the calories, but uh, some of these cereals are deficient in key micronutrients. And even those that have some of the micronutrients, they have other factors that affect absorption of those uh, micronutrients. The other one could be also disease condition, mm -hmm. such that uh, our bodies are not able to absorb the micronutrients in the food. And then uh, peop uh, that one now results to somebody suffering from micronutrient deficiency. At the stage of the newborn, the babies, the children, micronutrient deficiency leads to low birth weight. And what happens when you have low birth weight, that children may not grow to its potential. And because of those deficiencies, there's high mortality rates and impaired mental development. Impaired de uh, mental development means a lot to our economic development because it means that that person, when, when that child, when they grow to maturity, then they will be, be below their potential in mental faculties. Then, when you look at the child, the consequences is stunting. As a country nationwide, if you take 100 children, 26 children are stunted. Meaning those 26 children in 100 will never realize their potential. And it's good we are here, you know, as professionals, because we will be judged by generations if we don't make good decisions that will uh, ensure food and nutrition security. For, for us to be able to put this so that 
the private sector is able to run with. What will be the appropriate price that will be able to bring down the price of cassava to be uptaken by the industry? So that now the factories are able to take it up for blending. So the business case is hinging on these factors that we are going to work around the factors that the, we are able to run around and we are able to manage that the prices are able to come down. Farm Concern is an agri-market development agency. We focus on market development. Now, when we are talking about blending of flowers, it is going to be required to be absorbed at consumer level. Then Farm Concern and other organizations that focus on consumer awareness and other market development strategies then need to come in. So as Farm Concern, our areas of specialization, before we begin any work, we look at value chain analysis. We want to do a value chain analysis to understand is it profitable for farmers or smallholders to be involved in that enterprise. We have invited private sector into this forum. For private sector, it has to be uh, economies of scale. It has to be business. So th for the farmers, then that's the aspect. We want to look at smallholder commercialization. We are looking at four value chains that we have highly spoken about this morning. We are looking at sorghum, we are looking at millet, we are looking at maize, at cassava. How do we bring these commodities to scale to be able to be absorbed, to be able to form a part of the process of, the blow, of, 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 of flour blending? Then, as an organization, we look at market taxes. When the farmers have produced this cassava, where does it go? So those are really the three key areas in which we focus on so that we are not just telling the farmers, produce this or get into this value chain and then there is no benefit for them. When we come to the issue at hand, whereby we are talking of flour blending, we currently have a number of standards that are related to, uh, to this blending thing. And we have the main one, which is the composite flour specification. And then we have the other standards, which are now uh, for the flours that are going to be used for the blending. We have the cassava flour, sorghum flour, millet flour, and the main one that is the milled maize product specification which is the one currently for maize, the white maize that we like so much. So we are now, uh, we are glad to note that we have not been, let, been caught off guard. As Kenya Bureau of Standard, we are actually moving at par with the theme. So the standard talks about blending of, may, of uh, grains, particularly with cassava. It's actually mentioned in the standard and with regard to the issues of blending with cassava, it's mentioning about issues of hydrocyanic acid content and uh, the, the, the minimum requirements that's supposed to be there. Because remember, at the end of the day, when we're developing standards, it's all about food safety and ensuring that the standards are ensuring high quality and at the same time promoting trade. One thing I want to highlight, which is uh, very often ignored, especially when you talk about maize, and when you talk even about other crops, is aflatoxin. And I want to start that uh, very quickly by asking you, uh, do you know that uh, this country holds the record for the largest outbreak of my uh, aflatoxic causes in the world? In 2004, 150 people died in eastern Kenya because of uh, aflatoxicosis. Now my question uh, was, is in there a way we could have dealt with this maize so that people can eat? That's where we come in as scientists. So I am looking at the methods of preparation that, uh, uh, that will reduce the aflatoxin in the food as eaten. And I got the answer from Mexico. They use uh, uh, what they call next thermalization, alkali cooking of maize to reduce the aflatoxin as they produce massa for tortillas. And I say, can we adopt that system here? Can we add alkali, which is calcium hydroxide, not sodium hydroxide, because sodium hydroxide is uh, associated with hypertension. Calcium hydroxide, we add it to Uji, we add it to uh, Ugali, 
we add it to whatever other product, even the very when it is being boiled, so that we can be able to bring down the aflatoxin. Farmers are making commercial decisions consistently, and they don't make a maize decision. They make an integrated cropping system decision, meaning that the profitability of maize is at a question in each of these aspects. So even as we discuss the blending and availability, I think the question of its profitability is something that needs to be addressed, and largely, of course, through both pro productivity, uh, increasing productivity, and ensuring that pricing is also uh, addressed. The question we are asking is how do we ensure that not just to bring down the cost of doing business for the farmers, but to make it reasonable enough for them to turn these commodities to profitable commodities. So sorghum, millet, as well as cassava have to be competitive so that they can then offer the best pricing for consumers at the, at the table. Then the other issue here, for example, looking at uh, sorghum, looking at the various uh, prices and then who are the losers, who are the winners along the value chain, and how do we make sure that it becomes uh, a fair game for all the players. The other question is how do we unlock then sustainable value chain wide de demand? And I think we are saying it's now from workshops. We have had lots of workshops, and I think one of the issues that we are all in agreement is everyone who has presented here has a story of some efforts. But these efforts are fragmented and haven't been concerted. And we are glad that through the State Department of Agriculture, now we can concert these efforts and ensure that all these efforts, what, what each of the presenters did was to actually give very top line, very top level um, findings. But in real sense, this is a lot of information, a lot of data that is available in this room. But how do we consolidate it and now get it into implementation? How do you also ensure that the consumers appreciate and understand sufficiently that this is a solution for them and they can now demand that they want the flour bladed even as we do the implementation. So that it is not just a push, is that we actually have been a pull by the consumer because we will then ensure that there is a, there's an image building of sorghum, there is an image building of millet and cassava, so that as we bled, we make sure that the commodity is acceptable in terms of how we uh, broaden that commodity. And of course, looking at the profitability and looking at continuous private sector engagement. And so cost drivers for us is critical to just make sure that we monitor them because after all these efforts, then profitability is what is going to make sure that this food is available at the urban and the rural levels as well as the peri-urban. The discussion that we are having today is very important. It's very important because it's coming at the right moment when the government is actually addressing the issue of uh, um, food security as a flagship uh, project for uh, this government. So I think we are in the right place, we are at uh, the right moment to really discuss about food security.